So here at Lasagna Club, obviously we're about great wines and that is why I'm excited to share a Pinot Grigio with you. Now this is a varietal that gets a bad rap for a really good reason. Uh, there are so many terrible examples of Pinot Grigio out there and I swear that half the examples of Pinot Grigio that are out there are barely Pinot Grigio like held together to begin with. And yet we're talking about a varietal that the Quartermaster Sommeliers considers classic from three different regions. Uh, so from Alsace and from uh, Northern Italy and from Oregon, believe it or not, they all produce uh, versions of Pinot Grigio that are classic, that show their location, that show the hand of a winemaker and are really, really beautiful. And quite frankly, I mean, Pinot Grigio is super refreshing and super delicious. Um, so this is from Alto Adige. So uh, this is the area of Italy that was sort of you know, it, it retains a lot of its Austrian kind of heritage. Uh, it goes by the name of Sutural, which means the South Tyrol Empire. I know that I talked about this a couple of months ago when we were presenting the wines of uh, Elena Welch when we poured her Lagrine. But uh, but th this area, so I mean, uh, this is from Terlano, which is between Murano and Bolzano. So Bolzano is sort of like the the capital of Alta, of the Sutural region. Uh, and if you keep going north, eventually you you are in the like you're in the Alps. In fact, you head over and you're right away into Austria. Uh, the next stop is Innsbruck. Uh, so that's how far north you are. When you're that far north, you're sheltered from the the northerly winds that uh, sort of come down uh, or across uh, Europe. So the the Alps provides a moderating influence to those cold northerly winds, and it actually dries the area out quite a bit. You've got a pretty continental climate, but it ends up being nice and warm because you do moderate some of those uh, those cooling systems from farther north. So you end up with a dry kind of moderate growing season that allows a lot of ripeness in your grapes. Uh, so Pinot Grigio, uh, this is uh, hand harvested. It is you know fermented in temperature controlled stainless steel, and it spends you know six months on the leaves. What are leaves? So as as um, a wine goes through its alcoholic fermentation, obviously yeast is what is providing that. And as those yeast cells slowly do their thing, they kind of fall to the bottom of the fermenting vessel and they kind of sit there. Uh, and what you do is you can choose at that point to wrap the wine off of the leaves or to leave them on the leaves, or you can even stir those leaves up. And what they do is they give a texture and a width to the wine. They give a flavor that is super yeasty or bready or kind of like beer foamy. And they give like that like richness of texture for sure. So <laughs> what makes this Pinot Grigio great is the fact that I mean, you feel the care and you feel the sort of quality in the wine, but you also feel that like beautiful texture. I mean, you've got like ripe pear and you've got like a little bit of kind of lychee. There's some cantaloupe or some honeydew. And then just like beautiful like leaves notes that really define like part of the smell in this wine. It's got a finish. It just continues developing across your palate. It's fresh, it's beautiful, it's easy drinking, uh, it's refreshing. Yeah, it's just, you know what, Pinot Grigio gets such a bad rap. Uh, and yet there's such great examples of it to be found. And I think that my favorite examples, you know, aside from the Grand Cruz of Alsace, are those really, really refreshing examples from Northern Italy. So super excited to share the Pinot Grigio from uh, the Cantina Terlan. Uh, yeah, delicious. Thank you.